Just bring a spoon to enjoy our super easy soups. First, healthy and hearty, lentil soup. A perfect soup companion, cheddar biscuits. Smoky and sweet, roasted vegetable soup. Ready in only 15 minutes, tortellini and broth with escarole. And nothing goes better with soup than this open face grilled cheese with apple and bacon on today's everyday food. Funding for everyday food is provided by Your Glen Organic Tomatoes. When you can't pick them yourself, Your Glen will pick them for you. Straight from the vine and onto your table. Your Glen Organic Tomatoes, picked for picky chefs. This program is made possible in part by Glad Press and Seal Wrap. You can use it to make custom spill-proof seals, to protect against freezer burn, and to create custom bags. Glad Press and Seal Wrap. What happens when you add flour to Pam No Stick Spray? Pam for baking. Specially created to reach every nook and cranny so your most challenging baked goods come out better. Pam for baking. Chrysler Town & Country with Stow & Go Senior Storage. There when you need it, not there when you don't. Chrysler. Inspiration comes standard. Mom, the bus is here. Don't forget your lunch. These are great. Can I have the recipe? How does she do? Thanks for helping with the groceries. <laughs> hey, Mom, look at this. I'm starving. What's for lunch? These would be a great appetizer. Learn recipes, tips, and techniques from our experts for getting food on the table every day with Everyday Food. There's nothing like a big bowl of this hearty lentil soup on a cold day. Start making your soup. Cook up three strips of bacon that have been cut into half-inch pieces until they're golden brown and crisp. That'll take about eight or ten minutes. If there's a lot of fat left in the bottom of the pot, you're going to want to pour some of that off, leaving about a tablespoon. So I'm just going to take a little bit out. This is about a tablespoon. That's going to give it a lot of flavor, so you want to leave some of it in there, and it's going to help you saute your vegetables, which are a large onion, that's been chopped, three medium carrots. Just have those lengthwise and then cut them into half inch moons. So stir those in to your bacon and try to scrape up a little bit of those brown bits that are on the bottom of the pan. If you wanted to make a vegetarian soup, you certainly could replace the bacon with a tablespoon of olive oil and it would be delicious. Just cook that until it's slightly softened, about five minutes over medium heat. While I'm letting that cook, I'll just go over here to my lentils. It's one and a half cups of lentils for this soup. To get them nice and clean, put them into a sieve that's set into another bowl and wash them right in this bowl. Just swish them around a little bit and let them sit in the water not too long, a minute or two is fine, but don't let them sit too long or they'll start to absorb a ton of water. These look nice and softened and to that mixture add three cloves of garlic that have been minced. And cook that just until it's fragrant, about 30 seconds. Smells pretty fragrant. And add two tablespoons of tomato paste. little shy of two, so there you go. Stir that in and cook it for one minute. The tomato paste is going to add a really nice richness to the stew and a little hint of sweetness, which is really quite delicious. Add half a teaspoon of dried thyme and the lentils. Right in your pot and stir that around. This is two cups of low-sodium 
canned chicken stock. You could certainly use homemade if you wanted to, and that's naturally low sodium if you don't add salt to your stock. And two cups of water. Turn your heat up and bring it to a boil. Once it comes to a boil, reduce it to a simmer, cover it, and cook it about 30 to 45 minutes. Mm. So this is uh, cooked till the lentils are tender, about 45 minutes. If it gets too thick while you're cooking it, add a little bit of water. Mm. Just want to season this with one and a half teaspoons of coarse salt and a quarter of a teaspoon of freshly ground pepper. And as the final touch, a tablespoon of red wine vinegar. This adds a little bit of brightness to the flavor that's really kind of unexpected. This hearty lentil soup is great, served with salad and bread for a meal. It's really terrific. And definitely freeze any leftovers if there are any. Four easy ingredients are all you need to make this open-faced grilled cheese with apple and bacon sandwich. It's perfect with soup. The bacon has been cooked four slices on a rimmed baking sheet with a little bit of parchment. I cooked it for about six to eight minutes per side at 350 degrees, and you can see it's nicely crisp. And when you remove it from the oven, just put it on a little paper towel to blot off any remaining grease. Meanwhile, I have four slices of whole wheat bread here, and just place it on a cookie sheet. And for the cheese, I'm using cheddar cheese here, which you can just thinly slice. If you prefer another cheese, that would be fine. But since this is kind of an after-school snack that I would use for the kids, this is the cheese they're used to in their grilled cheese sandwiches. You want about eight ounces in total. Just cut off several pieces, not too thick, because you're going to stack it up with your bacon and your apples. It might seem a little crazy, but I'd eat this for breakfast. I bet you my kids would eat it, too. You've got these simple little ingredients. Put them together in an unusual way and you'd be surprised how interested the kids then become. I have a green apple here. You could use a red apple. And if you don't have an apple core, just cut out the core. But this is kind of a, a fun tool. It's nice to have in the house. And if you use as many apples as I do, you might invest in one. And that completely removes the core. Cut the apple in quarters. There we go. And cut the apple. Again, not too thick. I kind of like the green apple because it's, it's sweet, but it's also a little tart, which is just so good with the cheddar. Now, place your cheddar on a thin layer on each piece of bread. And if you find you have a little bit, you can just break it. Next, place your apples. I like to just put a couple, maybe four across on each side. Just do what feels right to you. That's the important thing when you're cooking. Even if you're just making a little snack like this, if you read a recipe or you see a recipe, don't be afraid to improvise. I've discovered that if you put a very thin layer of cheese before you use your bacon, it kind of sandwiches those apples in between the layers of cheese and makes it even more yummy. Perfect. And last, but of course not least, tear your bacon into quarters. And once the cheese melts down, the bacon will adhere to the cheese. And you will have one yummy snack. With a bowl of soup, it would be a great lunch. It's perfect. My oven is still at 350 degrees, and this should cook for about 10 to 12 minutes. Just keep an eye on it, because you want the cheese to be melted. Mm, these are perfect. Cheese is melted, bacon's still crispy. I think I will cut these into quarters. Mm. Crispy bacon, warm apples, melted cheese. I bet this is delicious. Mm. I make soup all the time. And this roasted vegetable soup is great because roasting really brings out the flavor of the vegetables. I start with six beefsteak tomatoes, nice big juicy tomatoes, and I simply halve them 
and then take the core out on both sides and just put them face down in the pan and two carrots cut into about quarter inch rounds and it doesn't matter if they're perfect slices either because it's all going to get pureed you just want them roughly the same size so they'll cook for the same amount of time and throw them right in there four cloves of garlic peeled whole put them in and a leek Leeks are wonderful. They have a great, great flavor. A nice, fresh, oniony, but not too sharp kind of flavor. And cut it in half, like that, and then across and make half moons, what we call those. Now, leeks really are kind of dirty. Being in the onion family, they grow in the ground. I need to float these in water to clean them just separate them with your fingers and you can see that dirt is going to go to the bottom now because I'm roasting as opposed to sweating or sauteing I need the leaves to be dry so I'm going to blot them on a paper towel roasting is a dry heat and it's a great way to caramelize the vegetables and bring out the sweetness I roast vegetables for soup all the time now I need two tablespoons of olive oil, a nice fruity olive oil. And it could be a little more or less. Start mixing around. This doesn't have to be laid out perfectly. We just want everything to get coated. This is going to have such great flavor in a soup. We need salt and pepper. That will help bring out the sweetness in the vegetables. Turn these over. That's the only thing that is kind of important is to turn these over because we're going to peel these when they come out. This is going to roast for about an hour in a 425 degree oven. Oh wow, look at these. These came out of the oven a little while ago. What I'm doing now is I'm peeling the tomatoes, just that skin. So all we'll have is that juicy pulp left. You can see that the vegetables in here have caramelized and browned and given this wonderful juice in here that's really going to add to our soup and it smells it smells divine they come off really quite easily if you don't get every last piece of skin off that's okay you just want the bulk of it off okay I have a stock pot and I'm going to add to that two 14 and a half ounce cans of vegetable stock you can use chicken stock I do it all the time but if you really want to keep this purely vegetarian use the vegetable stock and then a cup of water and then I'm going to put all those beautiful vegetables right into that stock pot everything we want the juice we want all the little vegetables we want the seeds we don't want to miss any of that flavor we'll bring this up to a boil and then we'll reduce it and let it simmer for about 10 minutes Okay, this got to cook for a while and then I've let it cool down because I'm going to puree it in a blender. You need to do this in batches. You always want to make sure that you don't fill a blender up too much because it can splash and if it's hot, that's dangerous. So you really need to be careful. In fact, if you make soups a lot, it's a very worthwhile investment to get an immersion blender. They make small ones that you can use in a kitchen at home and it's a great thing to have. In the meantime, just put that top on like that, make sure it's on tight, and I cover with a towel for a little extra security. That's it, puree. If it's a little chunky, that's okay. If it's a big chunk, you can always fish it out, but a little chunky is okay. It's good to have some texture in the soup. Stir it a little bit. I'm going to make a nice bowl. This would be so nice with a little bit of grated cheese on it, or a nice crusty loaf of bread. Actually, what I'm going to do is take some basil and I'm just going to tear it. That's such a nice fresh flavor. Any fresh herbs would do. And you see how easy this is to do. This really is everyday food. If there's anything better than biscuits, it's cheddar biscuits. And you can have them ready in 30 minutes. In a large bowl, we together two cups of all-purpose flour and two and a quarter teaspoons of baking powder. If you haven't made biscuits before, it's really easier than you might think, so give them a try. I also have three quarters of a teaspoon of baking soda and a 
half a teaspoon of salt, and then I have a quarter teaspoon of pepper. I like to combine all the dry ingredients first so that they're evenly distributed. This is six tablespoons of cold, unsalted butter that I've cut up into small pieces. This is called cutting in butter. Sometimes it's called rubbing in butter. And this is a method that's used in biscuits, in pastry dough, in crumble topping. And it's something that once you know how to do, you'll be able to do so many recipes. I'm using a pastry blender. You may have seen one before, maybe your mom had one. It's a great tool. And what it's doing is it's cutting the butter into smaller pieces. And as you do that, it's coating each of those pieces of butter with flour. So you can see here, it's starting to look like cornmeal. You have some big lumps like that, but this is exactly what you're looking for. So I'm just going to wash off my hands really quickly. I have three quarters of a cup of buttermilk. And buttermilk is great in biscuits. And very gently with a fork, mix it together. Now just as it's starting to come together, I'm going to put in my cheddar cheese. I have three quarters of a cup of shredded cheddar cheese. Now I want to put it in now because I want to combine it without overworking the dough. Now I'm using cheddar here, but you could use any kind of cheese that you wanted that's a melting cheese. Put a little flour in here. It's a little bit wet. Gently up against the side of your bowl. Bring them together. This is ready. And this is really simple. I, I broke it down step by step so that you could see really what you need to do here. And then just very gently pat this. You don't need a rolling pin. You don't need any special equipment. And it's fun to get your hands dirty. And it's a special treat to have biscuits. So pat this about an inch thick. Let's see. Flour biscuit cutter. This is a two inch biscuit cutter. And cut as closely together as you can. Start by the edge. Brush these with a little bit of butter on top so you can make them really golden as they bake. These go in a 425 degree oven and bake them for about 18 to 20 minutes. These look so good. They're buttery and flaky. These cheddar biscuits are perfect with a bowl of soup. Mm. When I was a little girl, my Italian grandmother was always making soups like this tortellini and broth with escarole. She made homemade chicken stock and handmade all the tortellini, but in 15 minutes you can make something almost as good. I added three cans reduced sodium chicken stock, two cups of water just to thin it out a bit, and one bay leaf. That's all to get the seasoning going. You bring it to a boil, a nice rolling boil. One of my favorite vegetables is escarole. We had it all the time. It's perfect in soups. It tends to be bruised up a bit on the edges. So just take the outer pieces off. You can see also the way it grows, that it's got quite a bit of sand. Just remove the core and float it in a large bowl of water cutting it about one and a half inch pieces. It's going to collapse quite a bit once it hits the chicken stock. So don't worry if you think the pieces are too big. This also makes a great side dish, which you can just clean the same way and saute with a little bit of olive oil and garlic, a little salt and pepper. It's perfect. Just separate the pieces a bit when you place them in the bowl. And run some cold water over it. Stir it around with your fingers until all of the sand is free of the beautiful escarole leaves. It's taken a couple of minutes, but now we're up to a rolling boil. Put it straight into the boiling chicken broth, and right away it's going to start wilting. I bought in the supermarket, in the refrigerated section of the supermarket, one pound of cheese tortellini. 
and place the tortellini into the pot. This should really cook in about four to five minutes. And that is pretty much the whole soup, which is such an incredibly simple preparation for a delicious old style flavor. When it's finished, discard the bay leaf, or at least don't serve it to anybody, because that's a little, little bit of a strong flavor. Little bit of salt and pepper, of course. Oh, quarter teaspoon of ground black pepper. And a nice pinch of salt. Give it a stir. Finished. It's been five minutes and it's perfect. Tortellini are floating on the top. The smell is just excellent. The cheese with the escarole and the chicken stock is a really comforting smell to me. This would be great served just alone with crusty bread. Couldn't be easier. I mean, you're going from the stove top to the table in about 15 minutes. Now that's everyday food. Mm. If you're a fan of carrot cake like me, then you're guaranteed to love this recipe for carrot cake cookies. I start off with two ounces of cream cheese, two ounces of butter, which is half of a stick. This icing or filling is just cream cheese butter and a quarter cup of confectioner sugar, one teaspoon of lemon juice, just give it a strain, get out those seeds. What that's going to do is help keep it nice and bright and give it a little bit of sharpness. Now this needs to be refrigerated for at least 30 minutes just to help firm it up. Now for the cookies. Again, no mixer. Everything's going to be done by hand in this glass bowl. And take three quarters of a cup of flour, healthy pinch of salt, and a teaspoon of ginger. Now this is ground dried ginger, but if you like adding fresh ginger, I would probably add about two teaspoons. But we're going to use the dried today for convenience. Now over here, stick of butter that I've melted and cooled, half a cup of light brown sugar, This is a quarter cup of granulated sugar. Again, just another little pinch of salt over here. And just whisk until the sugar seems to have dissolved. Then add just the yolk of this egg. It's easy to separate an egg if you can just go back and forth in the eggshell like that. Whisk that in. So now fold three quarters of a cup of carrots in. Add the dry ingredients. And then a third of a cup of currants. For cookies, I think the smaller dried fruits work best. Last in, one cup of oats. We're not using quick cooking oats, we're using whole old fashioned oats. Fold those in gently. And this is a folding motion. What I'm doing is just trying to get the dry ingredients from the bottom of the bowl up to the top. And I don't want to smash those oats, so I break them apart gently with the rubber spatula. And then using two spoons, which I find the easiest, you just pry the cookie mixture onto the cookie sheet. And using two spoons, you can actually shape them very easily. So these are going to go into that 350 degree oven, and they bake until the edges are crisp, and they get a little bit of color, and that's going to take about 15 to 18 minutes. And you always want to rotate halfway through baking. I've transferred these to a rack, and they're completely cooled. Check that out. Crisp. The carrots are still bright orange. The currants are moist. They didn't dry out. This cookie's great, I'm telling you. And my filling has been chilled. You don't want to put too much filling in here. Remember, you have to bite this, so you don't want the filling to come out the edges. And you can just give it a little bit of a twist as you're squeezing gently together. And that, my friends, is the ticket. These cookies will disappear just as quickly as it took to make them. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.
So what's for dinner tonight? For complete recipes and nutritional information from today's show, as well as video tips and answers to your frequently asked questions, go to our website, Everyday Food, at pbs.org.